everyone. In this video, we will be deriving the first law of motion with the help of the second law of motion. So let's get started. So the statement for the second law of motion is that uh, the second law of motion states that the rate of change of momentum of a body is directly proportional to the applied unbalanced force in the direction of force. So this is what the second law of motion states which is the applied force is directly proportional to the rate of change of momentum. And we have also arrived at a formula which is F equals M into A where F is the force applied, M is the mass of the body and acceleration is given by A of the body which is moving. Now we have F equals, let us put the uh, formula for A here that is V minus U by T. So F equals M into V minus U by T. So here, let's take this t to this side. So it becomes ft equals m into v minus u. Now suppose the force acting on the body is zero. So there is no force acting on the body here. So when f equals zero, then m into v minus u will also be equals to zero since zero into t becomes zero. So what happens is here v minus u is also equals to 0 which means that v is equal to u. So we can we have concluded here that if the force applied to a body is 0 then its initial velocity is equal to its final velocity which means that when there is no applied force on a body it will continue moving with the same velocity u throughout the time t. So, when there is no force applied to a body which is moving, then the body would move with the same velocity with which it is moving throughout the time t. But when there is, a, uh, there is actually a force acting on the body, there will be a change in the velocity of the body. It may increase or decrease with respect to the force. But since the force is zero, which is, apply, uh, which is applied to a body which is moving, then there will be no change in the velocity of the body with which it was moving. And if u equals 0, which means the initial velocity is 0, since here u, uh, v is equal to u, that is initial velocity is equal to final velocity, the final velocity of the body will also be equal to 0 since the initial velocity is 0. That means the object is at rest. Since its initial and final velocities both are zero throughout the time period, the object is said to be at rest. So if u equals zero, v will also be equal to zero, which means that the body will continue to be at rest throughout the time t when the applied force is zero. That is when there is no force acting on a body which is at rest, then the body will not gain any velocity. Uh, which essentially is given by the this thing that is v will also be zero that is the final velocity of the body will also be zero. So here from these two conclusions it is clearly visible that when there is no externally applied unbalanced force onto a body which is at rest the, re the state of rest of the body is not changed at all or if there is an uh, if there is zero unbalanced external force acting on a body which is already in uniform motion, even then there is no change in the state of uniform motion of the body. So this is like saying that whenever a body is in a particular state of rest or of uniform motion, there is no change in the state of rest or uniform motion in a particular direction of a body unless the body is compelled by an external force to change that particular state of rest or of uniform motion in a straight line. So this is basically our Newton's first law of motion, right? So here we have started from the Newton's second law of motion, but at the end we have reached the Newton's first law of motion. So this is how we reach from Newton's second law to the Newton's first law. So this was all about this, that is the derivation of Newton's first law from the Newton's second law. And I hope this video was understandable to you. Thanks for watching. Tutorialspoint.com Simply easy learning.